In this video, we are going to talk about set interval notation. So, from the introduction to this topic, set theory, we've been talking about different sets where the elements are listed down. For example, you may have elements from 0 all the way up to 4. So, we're able to tell that the numbers that are listed there are what? Are natural numbers, okay? Or, or numbers. But there may be some cases where you have sets that consist of little numbers. And we know that little numbers will make up all the decimal numbers. So we have got unlimited numbers from, for example, if you just talk about from 0 to even just 1. There are a lot of numbers that are between the two. There are a lot of real numbers. So how do you do it? You use set interval notation to do that, to make your work easier. Okay. So what is really important is for you to understand that at the end of the interval, there, there is going to be a circle. It can be shaded inside or not shaded. Okay. So when it is shaded inside and when it's unshaded, these two have got different what? They've got different interpretations. Okay. So now let's say for A, that part is shaded inside. Then at the end it is not shaded. How do you get to present that set? Okay, so say that our A, so since we were able to say that it's shaded, and let's say that that end point is actually matching up with 0, we'll say that we'll use the square bracket 0, then all the way up to 10. And 10 is not shaded, so you use a curved bracket to show that. So that is the interpretation of uh, the square bracket and the curved. So if you talk about C, you find that, let's say, maybe that is negative 2, and that is maybe 3. All the two ends are not shaded. In such a case, we can represent C to B. We just use curved brackets to show that. So negative 2, all the way up to positive 3. Then for B... All the parts equal, they are not shaded, so we can say it's all the way from negative 4 up to 4. Okay, so that is very important when it comes to set interval notation. So, equal to here, you are also able to find the complements provided you are given the universal set. And therefore, let's say in this case, let's say our universal set is actually from maybe negative 4 all the way up to, up to 10. Remember that even the inversor set also has to have a range. So if 10 is part of the range, we can put a square bracket. Then if negative 4 is not, we can put a square bracket. Or oh, a curved, sorry. Yeah, so that is our inversor set. So how can we find a complement, knowing that we know that our A is actually from 0 all the way up to 10, where 10 is not part of what? Is not part of A. How do you get to come up with a complement? So in this case, our complement is going to consist of all the members that are not part of A but are part of the inversal set. So we're able to see that already using, uh, if you look at the number right, A is moving from 0 to 10. So meaning that starting from this point going all the way up to, up to negative 4 there, it is not part of what? It is not part of A. So that is part of A complement. Then if you look at 10, 10 is equal to not what? 10 is not part of A because of a, a circle that is not shaded inside there. So what are we going to do? So we'll say this part all the way from 0 to negative 4. So we'll say that is equal to... So is negative 4 part of the inversal set? It's not. So what is the end point? It's moving all the way up to all the way up to 0. So now, if you ask yourself, is 0 part of A or it's not? Since it is shaded, in A it is shaded, meaning that it is part of A. So it should not be part of what? It should not be part of the complement. So we'll put 0, but we'll put a curved to show that 0 is not part. But the range of the members that are not part of A is from negative 4 to 0, where negative 4 and 0 are not part of what? The complement. So this is going to be unionized with the other part. So assuming the universal set was continuously going this side, we would come up with a range as well. But we've only seen that only 10 is also not part of what? Is also not part of what? The A. So we'll therefore put it in brackets. It will just be a 10. Okay. So these are the elements of the members that are not part of A but are part of what? The universal set. So this is the way to go about it. In a case where you have a universal set being the set of real numbers, 
for example this part would have not been that it would have moved from all the way from 10 up to positive infinity so we get to look at such examples as well but basically this is an introduction to set interval notation let's get to do uh, a complex example to help us understand the concepts more deeper okay so we have a moving from 1 to 3 we have 2 we have b moving from positive 2 so i hope you're able to see that so we have our a from 1 to 3 we have our b from 2 to 6 c 3 to 6 so from there if you look at a since the first bracket is curved you're able to tell that 1 isn't part of a 3 is because of a square bracket then for b both 2 and 6 are part of b for c both 3 and 6 are not part because of the curved brackets then for the universal state we are told it's moving from 0 to 10 where both 0 and 10 are part of the universal set so how do we get to find the sets so we've been told first of all find each of the following sets and display it on the number line so if you draw it on the number line it's very easy for you to be able to answer some of the questions and i would advise each time you're given a question you come up with a number line first of all so let's come up with our number line so let's say this is our number line and first of all, you need to show the universal set. So it's moving from 0 all the way up to 10. And they are both part of what? They are both part of the universal set. So we have 0 here all the way up to 10. That is our universal set. In a case where they tell you the universal set is uh, all a set of little numbers, you should be able to tell that it is asking you to show the little numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity okay so now let's try to answer the first part so let's try to show the sets that we've been given so we've been told a is from one to three so one may be somewhere here three should be somewhere there so that is where our set a is so one is in part so we just draw a small circle here. then three is part of a so we shade it inside there we shade it so this is our set a then for our b where is our b our b is running from 2 so we set 2 is somewhere here so our b is running from 2 all the way up to 6 so from 2 all the way up to 6 let's say 6 is somewhere here okay so 2 both 2 and 6 are part of it so we can shade both ends we shade at 2 as well as what what at 6 so 6 is here so this is our b okay and let me just try to write a better and this is it wasn't supposed to be complement it is just a so we've shown our a and our b our c on the other hand is going to be from I'll use a different car so that you don't get confused. It's moving from three all the way up to all the way up to six as well. Okay, somewhere there. So they are all not part of the universal set. They are all not part of uh, three and six are all not part of C. So we'll not shade the ending part. So it's not supposed to be shaded. Even that part is not supposed to be shaded like that okay so we've represented all the given sets on the number line there so now we said uh, find the following sets and display them on the number line so let's do that so our first question is can to find c complement okay so we're finding our c complement how do you get to do that so you look at where c is this is our c so all the elements, all the sides are going to be part of what? Are going to be part of C complement. So we have from 3 to 6, that is part of C. So going from 3 going to all the way up to this part is not part of C. Even from that part, all the way up to that part, they are not part of what? They are not part of C. So what becomes? These two parts become our C complements okay so now you need to look at the end points of c we've seen that six according to what we've been told there it is not part of c so therefore it is going to be part of a complement and therefore we shade the complement 
Equally 3 is not part of C because of the curved bracket. So it's going to be part of a complement. So this part equally is being shaded. Okay. So let's come up with a range for these two guys. So I'll start with this part. I'll start with this part, which is running from 3 to 0. So 0 is part of a universal. So it's going to be part of a complement because it is not part of C. So we'll say, we'll start with a square bracket. 0 is part of um, the complement of C. So let me even show that, that C complement is equal to that. So 0 all the way up to 3. So now if I ask you a question, is 3 part of C or it's not? It is not part of C because of the curve bracket. So it's going to be part of um, the complement. So this is going to be the union with the other part. Okay. So you start with 6 again. 6 is also not part of the C. So it's going to be part of the complement. So we use a, a, a square bracket. Then 10. Is 10 part of the inversor? Yes, it is because of that bracket. So we we'll put 10. Then we put what? A square bracket. So if the inversor set was ending up with the curved brackets, all the end parts would have been what? Caved as well. But in the given case, it is ending up with a square bracket. So we end with the square brackets. Okay. So that becomes our C complement. Okay. And for us to show it on the number line, you can show it as I've shown it down here. So this is how you show it. You show it on top there. Okay. But that is the way you find the C complement and any complement that you may be asked. Okay. Let's try to move on and find um, the in A intersection B. A intersection B. So let me remove this part. Let me just try to create some space there. Okay, so we're trying to find A intersection B complement. So let's first of all try to find the intersection of A and B. Let's find what's in the brackets first of all. We have A intersection B. How are we going to find it? Let's try to show it on the number line. So we try to see the parts that are part of both. So this part all the way up to this part is also is part of A and what? A and B. So that region there. So this region is the one that is intersection intersecting between A and what? A and B. Okay. So ask yourself a question. Is 2 part of B? Yes, the 2 is also part of B. So meaning that that part is shaded there. So 2 is part of B. We know it is also part of A, as we are able to see. Because A is moving from 1 up to 3. So 2 is part of A. So the intersection is starting from... So we use the square bracket because 2 is part of both A and B. All the way up to, to 3. So is A consisting of 3? Yes, it is. And we know that 3 is also part of B. So this becomes our A intersection, what? B. We we'll use square, bra square brackets because all the real numbers from 2 to 3 are part of both A and what? B. So now, how do you get to find the complement of that? So knowing that that is the intersection, so the, um, the complement is going to be all the little numbers that are not part of what? The intersection. So all the way up to 10, but are part of the universal, even from this end again, all the way up to 0. So 2 and 3 are part of the intersection. So they are not going to be part of what? They are not going to be part of um, the complement. So our A intersection B complement is going to consist of the elements. So we'll start from the lowest, 0. 0 is not part of the intersection. And it is part of the universal. So we'll use a square bracket. So like I said, always the end point start with what is in the universal set. So we have 0 there, all the way up to, so I'm moving from this point all the way up to 2. But 2 is part of the intersection. So it will not be part of what? It will not be part of the complement. So we'll use a curved bracket to show that. This is going to be unionized with the other part. This part from 3 to 10. Then we are able to say that 3 is part of the intersection. So we just use a curved bracket to show that it is not part of the curved. It is not part of the complement. All the way up to 10. Then 10 is part of the intersection is not part of the intersection and it is part of the inverse so we use a curve we use a square bracket there 
so by now i hope you guys are able to see this, the situations where you are required to use a square bracket and where they require you to use a curved bracket okay so we've answered the second part and sh you showing it on the number line can be shown by the blue lines there so the end part should be shaded to show that zero is part of the complement even the end part there should be shaded to show that 10 is also part of the complement just like i've shown it down there so how do you find b minus c how do we get to find b minus c so let's have some space again this is out of the states that we started with and see we see the way forward to go about it okay so we're trying to find b minus c so we're on the third part there b minus c so we say that b minus c is the same as b intersection at c complement so from the number line there we already have our b so all we have to do is find our c complement so our c complement is going to start from 3 going to 0 up to that point so how do you get to know whether we are going to shade the 3 or not so if you look at the c it is caved so 3 is not part of what is not part of c so we are going to shade the or the complement so this part is going to be shaded to show that it's so that is our c complement going to the left side even the end part is going to be shaded because it's part of the inverse then on the other side we're going to start from here as well so if you look at the c there 6 is not part of c so it's going to be part of the complement and therefore we'll shade there so whenever you're finding the complement if the end point is shaded for the set for the complement it won't be shaded and vice versa so from there you move all the way up to 10 and the end point you look at what the universal set so the universal set it is part so even that will be part of the complement okay so that's what we have as our c complement on two sides so this tells you that the middle part this mid part is actually part of what is c then going to the ends of the universal set they are part of the complement so that is our c complement so we are able to say our c complement so now let's try to find the intersection of it with b where is it intersecting with b so we are able to see that the left part of the complement this side in green line I will use blue to show the, the intersection. It is intersecting there all the way up to this point. That is an intersection. Then from the, at the, in this other point, we only we are only able to see an intersection at 6. We are only able to see an intersection at this point. Okay. Between the B and the complement. Only 6 is eh, intersecting. So we we'll start with our left hand side. So we're able to see is two part of B. Yes, it is because it is shaded at that point. So we are moving from two. So we have from all the way from two up to what? Up to this point three. Is three part of the C complement? Yes, it is because it is not part of C. So that part is shaded. Then three is of is also part of B. So show that. Then this is going to be unionized with the other part. The other part will only have one intersection, only an intersection of six. So we'll say six. So if B was not shaded, if it was not shaded at the end there like that, there would have been no intersection. But because it is shaded at both B and the C complement, it is an intersection point. So that is the way you go about it. Then um, we can move on. So we found our B minus C. So this other question is asking us to find the intersection. So I'll skip this one because it is the same as eh, the second one. So if you look at the fourth one now, it is asking you to find the intersection of A with the B minus C, which we have already found. So this is our B minus C, guys. So we are trying to intersect it with what? We are trying to intersect it with A. So it's this part and that point intersecting it with a so the only intersection with a is is this part so you look at where a a is moving from one to three so 
this part so let me use zero to show that so this part is intersecting now if you look at the end of uh, a a is ending at three so even three is part of what is part of it so we can write the range here so a is moving from all the way from zero zero is not part up to three so i've just gotten that uh, so i'm trying to answer this one without the number line let me try to do that so guys we're trying to find the intersection of the two range the range of b minus c and a so what numbers are common so you're able to see that if you look at zero zero is outside this but three is part of it and two is so okay it will be a bit confusing let's look at the number line there let me just try to come up with a new number line so that you're able to follow clearly okay okay so we've determined our b complement to actually be from okay so i'll start with our b minus c our b minus c is actually starting from two from two up to three then it is then at six so uh, this is our uh, i'll share that point that is, that is part of b minus c then all the way from this point shaded up to three b what i've shaded in red is a b minus c then our a i'll use white it's moving from one so one is somewhere there from one up to to three and one is not part so it will be empty inside then three is part of it so that is this is our a then this other part is b minus c so what is the intersection try to shade the intersection so draw a line there and a line there so this part is eh, the intersection of the two sets so it's moving from two all the way up to to three and since at the end of a it is shaded and even b minus c is also shaded that is also a, an, inters in an intersection point so we're going to say it is starting from two so at at the end of b minus it is shaded even along a so it is also shaded so it is in from two all the way up to three in square brackets so that is our intersection of a and b minus c okay it's very simple very very simple all you have to do what is very important is for you to identify which point we are shading and which part is not shaded okay let's try to answer the last one let's try to answer the last one okay so the last one is asking us to find x minus c complement intersection a minus b so we've already found our uh, did we find no we've not yet found that okay so equally first of all before we come up with a number line let's try to reduce what we've been given there so x minus c is the same as x intersection so what c complement we have a complement outside intersection a minus so a minus b is the same as a intersection what b complement so we can distribute the complement on the on the first part so the complement distributed to x will be x complement distributed to the intersection to become union and the c, comp c complement will become c because the complement of a complement is a set so i'll put this in brackets intersecting with a intersection what b i believe this is easier to work with okay so i believe by now you guys understand that the complement of a universal set since our com uh, com is x there in, in this case that's our inverse set a complement of a universal set so if you have a universal set like in a venn diagram like this this is all of your x and then you're trying to find the complement meaning outside so there is nothing outside there so every time you are given a complement of a universal set it's an empty set so we have an empty set unionize it with c okay S then intersection so we still have a intersection b there complement so an in a, a union of a set with an empty set 
it's always that set because nothing is going to come from the the empty set so the comp this uh, this part is going to be c so we have c intersecting a intersection what b complement so I've, I've i've reduced that for you guys i've reduced this part and it is very easy for you to find that now so let's try to come up with space of space now let's try to have some space so it is very important when i given something complicated before you get to do it to show it on the number line and come up with set interval notation try to reduce it because we did in the other video we talked about how to how to reduce some of these things we talked about it so we know we in this case we now know that we already have our c we have already been given our c so we need to find our a intersection b complement okay so let's try to come up with a number line again that is our number line so you can feel free to pause the video and try it out before you get to look at the solution so we have our number line there all the way from what we have it all the way from so we have uh, from 0 to 10 that is our inversor set then we have our c in this case we're interested in c so c is moving from 3 all the way up to 6 so 6 should be somewhere there so it is not shaded because it's a curved bracket meaning that 3 is not part of c okay even that part is not shaded okay it, sh it shouldn't be shaded okay that is more clear and visible so that is our c then our a which one is our a our a is moving from from one to three and one is not part so we have one it's not part so how are we going to show it unshaded inside all the way up to three and three is part of it so we shade that is visible enough that is our a then our b complement since we know that our b is moving from two to six so our b is moving from two to six that is our b so our complement is going to be the opposite now all the parts that are not part of it so let me show b complement and remove so that is supposed to be our b so we are moving from this point it is not shaded because for b it is shaded so the complement is going to be the opposite at that point so all the way up to all the way up to zero and this part is going to be shaded because zero is not part of is not part of b but is part of the the universal set so that is our B complement. Then the other part it will start from here again, all the way up to the maximum. Equal there it will be shaded because ten is part of the inversor set and not part of B. Then maybe this part will not be shaded because it's shaded it's shaded for B, so the complement is not supposed to be shaded. Okay. So we can remove our B because we are not interested in our B. We are only interested in the in, in the what in the in its complement. Okay, so let me show that part. It's moving all the way up to uh, all the way up to just two. So it is not shaded. Okay, so we're trying to find first of all the intersection of A and the B complement. So it is this part up to this part this is the intersection of our a and our complement that part is not intersecting with a at any point so we won't be interested okay so if you look at one is part is one part of b complement yes it is it is but is it part of a it is not because it is not shaded at that point so we therefore say our a intersection B complement is starting from which point? Starting from one. But are we going to use a square bracket or a curved one? So we we'll use a curved one. We we'll use a curved one because 
it is not part of A. So we have 1 all the way up to, we're ending up to 2. So we're able to see that 2 is part of what? A, but it is not part of B complement. So we'll use what? We'll put a 2 there, then we also use a curved. That's the way to go about it. And that is our, so this part is our B, A intersection, B complement. Then this part again is supposed to be intersected with what? With C. Where is our C? Where is our C? Our C is this part. That is the only intersection. So we are able to see that our C and so this is our C. Is it intersecting? This is, okay, our C is moving from 3 up to 6. Is it intersecting with the A intersection B complement at any point? No, there is no intersection. So we can therefore conclude that the answer of the solution to this question it is what? It is an empty set. There is no intersection at any point. Okay. So one key that is very important. Let's say, guys, in this case, let's say they had asked you to find um, A union B complement. How is it going to be different? Since we've already found our A intersection B complement. So that is our intersection. How do you get to find the union? So remember you have your A. Your A is moving from all the way up to... Is moving from, from 1 up to 3. Okay. So the way to go about it, guys, is to get the minimum point. So we are moving from, this is for B complement, all the way up to, all the way up to 2. Then A is moving from 1 all the way up to 3. So our union, our union is going to start from the minimum point, which is 0. Okay. It is moving continuously all the way up to... Three, so we'll put three there, and we we'll put a square bracket because three is part of a. So what is our a union b complement? But is it that is that all? No, we still have another part of what b complement. So you unionize it again. Is so we'll start with a, a curved bracket because six, this part this part is not shaded. So six all the way up to ten because ten is shaded. We we'll use what a square bracket. So this is it about set interval notation. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So I just hope that this video gave you an idea on how to go about it. And if you still have some questions, more questions, feel free to inbox me or email me at transcendedinstitute.gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.